Sales development continues to grow in importance as a critical component of a successful go-to-market strategy. And with the explosion of new tools, technology, and processes, the sales sales development development industry industry itself itself is is thriving. thriving. As seen with the growth of the 10-bound sales development market map over at 10bound.com. On this podcast, we'll dive deep and go beyond sales development to think about the future of technology, processes, and tools in the industry with our host, noted futurist, author, and sales development practitioner, Justin Michael. Welcome to Beyond Sales Development. Tune in each week and be sure to hit subscribe, leave a comment, and turn on notifications to never miss an episode. And now, Beyond Beyond Sales Sales Development Development. with your host, Justin Michael. Welcome back to Beyond Sales Development on 10bound.com. I'm Justin Michael doing my best Hotel California lyric over here. I'm a futurist for 10 Bound, and I have Anupreet Singh. Anupreet, introduce yourself and your company. We'd love to learn more. Sure, Justin. So my name is Anupreet. I'm the head of sales for Smintle. So Smintle is a sales intelligence platform that helps organizations understand which companies have the highest propensity to buy from them. So there are a lot of sales intelligence companies out there helping you know clients with a lot of email addresses and phone numbers. And, you know, that piece is already solved for. So we thought, let's just go beyond that and help SDRs and sales reps understand within those millions of email addresses and phone numbers that they already have sitting in their databases or CRMs, who would have the highest propensity to buy from them on a particular week or a particular day. That is such a great idea. Is that like Bambora in a way? So essentially, Bambora has an intent based on search. We do everything but search, if I may put it that way. So we, we believe that search is you know, not the most accurate way to identify someone's intent. And I'll put that into perspective. So imagine you know, one of your interns you know, searching for CRM platforms on Google and landing, on, landing an article on Forbes, which talks about CRMs, and he's reading that. Bambora would tell all its clients that care for CRM platforms as a keyword, that this particular company is interested in learning more about CRM platforms. Now, now imagine that kind of the kind of chaos that this has created because there was an intern searching for it using the, the, the work internet and they use cookie data and which is further tied to IP addresses. So it just caught up the IP address of the company. And now they informed around 25 different sales reps, which are their clients that, hey, you know, this company is interested in buying a CRM platform. That in itself, even if that works well, you know, right now that's slightly you know, even more challenging with work from home setup when people are using their home internet. So the IP address are no longer the work IP address. So, so search-based intent, you know, if it's working well, I've, I've used, I personally use the free version of Bambora. I personally feel that there are more false positives than positives. So the concept, you know, it's great. The, the concept is great. And I don't know how many times I've, I've thought of partnering with something like a Bambora. But when I look at the, the hard reality and the accuracy of it, I kind of have some, have my own doubts. So what Sindel did instead is that it built intent based on more facts than assumptions. So when I say facts, our intent is based on four broad methodologies. The first one being technographics based intent, which is, are they using your competitors? Is there a renewal coming up with your, with your top competitor, which could be a great intent signal? Another intent signal could be, are they using your integration partner? Did they just started? Did, did they just buy your your biggest integration partner? So if Splintle integrates well with Salesforce, you know, and if and if someone tells Splintle that hey, Salesforce, this company recently bought Salesforce, right? So it just builds a different kind of intent signal for me because now I know that after they start using Salesforce, now they're in my ecosystem, and within that ecosystem, the next thing that would happen in the typical buyer's journey is that they will face these issues that Splintle can solve for. So I should rather start marketing them and and try start start pitching them already because they're now in my ecosystem. So the second kind of you know intent signal that we give you again based on technographics is that are they into your ecosystem now? The third signal that we give you, we also call it keyword intent, but it's more like the keywords that these companies are talking about, not the keywords that they're searching about. So there's a huge difference in both the things. We we tell you the keywords that these companies are talking about in on their own websites, on their own say job descriptions, on their annual reports, financial reports. So let me give you, give you a quick example. So for example, if Chili Piper reaches out to every company that has a problem related to booking of meetings, right? And Chili Piper is, is great at doing that. 
they would want to know all the companies that have a book or demo button on their website. And Central's keyword intent can tell Chili Piper exactly that. And now Chili Piper has a great integration with Salesforce. We can tell Chili Piper that these are all the companies that are having that book or demo button and also using Salesforce. So look at the kind of intent that we are creating there. And then we finally have fourth intent signal which is for people intent. We tell companies that have recently made a purchase, people that have recently you know, switched jobs. So for example, someone hired a new VP of sales and I sell to VP of sales, for example. I would want to know that because now this new VP of sales that has been hired would make all, all the different kinds of you know, changes in his strategy, would be open to more innovation, etc. So we have the fourth type of intent signal that we have is people intent. We combine all of that and produce a buying propensity score. And we tell our customers that for your category of tool, these are the companies that have a highest propensity to buy from you. And you know, this is, and this is completely different from what Bambora does. So, yeah. That's really cool. Um, in the past and in my book, I've talked about intent data and Bambora and uh, is six cents in this category too, or. Yeah. Six cents is in the same category of Bambora. If I may. Yeah. I'm just trying to help the listeners learn, you know, we go pretty deep on this show because we have XDRs sales development reps, and there's about 600,000 of them and 10 bounds a hub really for sales de- development. I was going to ask you, where do you think this technology is going? I mean, are we going to be yeah. able to, in two years from now, just kind of know in advance, like here's 200 accounts and here are the five that are most likely to buy. How, how much can we know? I mean, and we're in a post GDPR world, right? Where this data is secure, but there's so many signals, so much, information is publicly available we could use ai and ml to just the quantcast model we could, we could just know who to talk to is is this possible or is this 2035 pie in the sky stuff no absolutely it is 100 percent possible and there are companies that have already started moving towards that and this ecosystem i love the way this ecosystem is expanding like anything like you know zoom in for going public was a great news for everyone in the ecosystem and the, the kind of response that they got was kind of reassuring to all the you know upcoming companies like Spintle because you know we, we got so much more confidence that there are people believing in, in, in this idea. There are people believing in sales intelligence as a concept. And if you if you look at larger companies like Salesforce, their product that's called Einstein is doing something similar, but for for the lower end of your you know pipeline, for for basically for basically the, the lower half of your funnel. They're doing exactly the same thing. So they're telling you that based on your car run, pipe and the way it's moved in the, in the last few years, it seems like these companies have a buy, higher chance of buying from you. So they, they do that for the lower half of, of your funnel. We do it for the top of the funnel. But if you look at it, if you combine all of this together, you know, you're trying to build an ecosystem of buyer and seller, whereas wherein buyer is able to make informed decisions around, you know, which companies should I be buying based on my current stack? Now that, you know, this buyer can come look at which, who's using which technology today on our website, et cetera. You know, if we, if we combine, if we open it up for the buyers as well, you know, it could become potentially huge wherein a buyer can come and look at which technology compares, how many customers that Salesforce has versus HubSpot on our platform. And it just becomes crowdsourced in a way. And everyone is kind of contributing to those kind of insights. And buyer is learning which tool I should buy and seller at the same time has a lot more insights for about the buyer. So which tools have they recently purchased? Which tools are they likely to, you know, do, do they prefer a more expensive tool versus a less, less expensive tool based on their history of purchases? So, and all of this is publicly available, right? There are digital signatures that technologies leave behind when, you know, anyone is using them. And those digital signatures, less, if I may put it that way, has aced that, that piece of identifying digital signatures for around 40,000 technologies. So that in itself is huge. For 40,000 technologies out there, like Salesforce, HubSpot, or like smaller ones as well, like HelloSign, DocuSign, we would know exactly when a particular company started using that technology because the digital signature, it could be in the API call, it could be in the JavaScript, it could be in the HTML source code, it could be in the URL of the log. So for example, Salesforce, right? If I may decode it for you. So if you look at your Salesforce login URL, it would have your company name dot my dot salesforce.com. If you look at your Splat URL, it would have your company name dot Splat.com. So that subdomain hitting is another way to go about it. And then if you combine it with NLP and you look at the unstructured data as well, and Central is the only company doing that today. So if you combine that with NLP and unstructured data, which, which comes from job descriptions, for example, you can read through job descriptions and know so many technologies that this company uses, right? So if, you, if you're hiring for an account executive, you can read through 
and all of this doesn't really fall into the purview of GDPR. All of this is publicly available information that we're gathering. So in two years, I wouldn't be surprised if you know sellers can exactly know which company should I be reaching out to next. And SDR don't really have to do that. Pure cold outreach. They know so much intent around you know who is going to buy in this category with all the information flowing in from different technologies that that are trying to capture. Oh, that's really fascinating. One of the other companies that's actually right here in Santa Barbara is called HG Insights. So right. It's called HG Data. Yes. That was a source of technographics, which is an important one. Do you play in that realm? Because I guess you do, because yeah. you can see 40,000 signals. So if I wanted to create a list of companies that use Pardot, yeah. you could see the signature of that, and yeah. I could go into your database and pick up yeah. a couple hundred companies that have that. So it's really good for intent. All right, so now that you've identified the companies, what tips do you have for SDR reps to get the meetings? I mean, it's not exactly what you do, but you see so much of this data. How do you leverage it? Yeah, so uh, I, I speak to SDRs very, very often. You know, our end users are SDRs. Like we are, you know, we are best friends for SDRs because our systems help them be, be more successful on their job. So one, one advice that I have for SDRs is that like if anyone tells you that reach out to your entire total addressable market, just tell them that, hey, you know, that's, that's insane. If someone tells you to reach out to everyone in, in a geography and in a size, and that's the only ICP filter that you have, tell them they were living in 2015. Things have moved on from there. ICP does not happen just by the geography or by the size of the company. There's a lot more to an ideal customer profile than just the geography and size. And, you know, Justin, you would know that more than me. You speak to so many different leaders in, 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 in the SaaS side of the world. And if you ask them, what's your ICP? They would just stop by saying, hey, more than 500 and in US or less than 500 and in, you know, Canada. And that doesn't make, you know, a lot of sense because, again, that leaves you with hundreds of thousands of companies. And then you tell your SDRs that, hey, reach out to each one of them and, and try to get meetings with any of them. So it's still spray and spray and pray kind of strategy. So, you know, even if you don't have something like Slintel, try and identify what are the kind of integrations that are doing better for you. So would a Salesforce customer have a better, better chance to buy from you? You know, understand that. And then mention the, in the subject line of the email that you're sending across that I know you're using Salesforce. Let's talk, I know, you know, exactly the same use case. Here's a case study of a customer who was using Salesforce, started using us, and this is how we, you know, change what they're doing today. If you're picking up a call in the first 15 seconds, do let them know that I already know the CRM that you use, the payment gateway that you use, and this is how I integrate with both of them and kind of solve for the problem that you might be having because you're using these tools for a while now. And I also know the job description that you've posted recently on monster.com, hiring for a specialist that would solve for this piece and my tool can exactly do that. So, you know, bridging those gaps from different areas and kind of having that kind of conversation is a lot more powerful than SD, for SDR than them, them just trying to reach out to everyone that falls under that broad, you know, targeted referral market. How much of Pareto principle do you think about when you're building the, the downstream NLP? I mean, there's algorithms, but how much of this stuff is just smart stack ranking? I mean, there's time is our greatest asset. So I think Slintel is like, why is it called that, by the way? Where did the name come from? Uh, so it's coming from sales intelligence. So we just kind of shortened it to Slinter. The, the word sales intelligence, uh, we were fascinated by that. And when, when we were, you know, coming up three years back, when we started up, uh, you know, there was Zoom Info that was making a lot of noise. And all, and they kind of marketed themselves as sales intelligence platform as well. And all of us were using it, right? And we realized that they're great with email addresses. They're great with phone numbers. But let's just build something that is actually super intelligent and kind of predicts. And, it's great to see that so many other companies are also progressing in the same direction now. There's, I think there's a product by Zoom Info as well that helps you find intent in the way that Sprintel does. So it's great that others are also validating the fact that this is the future of sales intelligence and intent in itself by combining technographic signals like, say, what HG does. You mentioned their name as well. And I again, I have a lot of respect for them in the technographic space. But Sprintel is just trying to combine what HG is doing and what Zoom Info is doing and just bring it on a table. and then. Both of them combined is a lot, uh, you know, it's a lot more powerful. So when you find out that these companies are using Salesforce, the next thing that you want to know is who is the decision maker, what's his email address and phone number. So our, our output is also the same, right? We also give you insights into emails and phone numbers, just like a Zoom info. But we also solve for that edgy piece for you so that you don't have to buy different tools and then try to figure out a way to integrate the two. 
I love how much just passion you have and you're putting together the rambling sessions. I'm going to go on your podcast. Tell me more about your background. How did you get into entrepreneurship and sales and how did you find this company? And you're so passionate about this idea. I am too, because I, you know, I noticed that there's not enough of the, on the intent layer. Yeah. I actually have a draft of my book and I'm going to make sure that I include your URL in the intent section. I've got Trudy and Wingman in the book too, but I want to make sure that I understand that. But take us through kind of your background. I mean, you're in sales, but you're evangelizing something that's quite disruptive and new. You could have sold anything. Uh, Sellers always like to know what's driving people, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I would love to. Uh, So I like to assume that I'm one of the the youngest sales leaders in the industry today. Um, I've just turned 28 and I've been leading sales teams ever since I was 26. So how did how this happened to me was by by the virtue of fact that I started my first company uh, while I was in my undergraduation and I was running a company called the online fest which was you know, the concept was to take uh, a regular college festival to an online level and then have online competitions just like America's Got Talent but happening on the web wherein everyone can participate and publish their talent of say photography or dancing or painting and compete amongst each other. So that was where, you know, I started my career from while I was still in the college. And while that was happening to me, I got a job off and I was doing, you know, my engineering in computer science. So I ended up getting an, a job offer from Computer Sciences Corporation, which is now DXC when they, after they merged with HP. So I got a job offer as a programmer at Computer Sciences Corporation and I joined them immediately while still running my company in parallel. What I realized after four years of me running my company was one, you know, I have not as experience to continue to be an entrepreneur and I need to come back to this. But after getting like, you know, around five to 10 years of experience and knowing and kind of building my network better. And the second thing that I realized while running my own company was the fact that I am better at selling than I am at coding. So, so I thought I'd make that shift. And then, you know, I spoke to the founders of a company called Metal, which is now acquired by Mercer. And this was actually my claim to fame. So Metal was actually my claim to fame. So I was speaking to the founder of Metal in the interview and he liked my background. He liked my my startup and he was excited about me joining the company, but he did not really know what to do with me because I was coming from a programming background and did not want to do coding anymore. So he was like, let, let us just give you our international sales business. So Metal is an online assessment company based out of India. So psychometric assessments and cognitive assessments and stuff like that. And I, I picked up their international sales business and scaled it from a, a zero to around $3 million in the first one year that I worked with them. While the India business was already doing well, international was kind of at a standstill. So we, we started building that team out. You know, we had a team of around 17 people by the end of the first one year. And we were talking around $3 million from international business alone. And then Mercer kind of caught, caught some attention about what's happening with Metal. And Mercer kind of acquired, Mercer, you know, came up with an offer to acquire us. And we, Metal is now a part of Mercer, which is a huge HR consulting, consulting firm and part of the Marsh Group, right? So then I became a part of the, the Marsh Group. And, you know, I was working out of the San Francisco office of Mercer. But then that's when, you know, I spoke to Deepak, who's the CEO of uh, Slintel. And he was building this, this cool stuff and he was trying to pitch Slintel to me as a customer. And when I looked at Slintel, I was kind of fascinated by both, you know, the passion with which Deepak was building this, more than passion, the sincerity with which he was building it. And I wanted to know more. So Deepak kind of offered me to stay at his place in the Bay Area. I was there for, you know, two months and I was living out of Airbnb. So Deepak said, why don't you actually move to my place instead of the Airbnb? Because I don't have a sales leader right now. You might want to stay here and see what we are doing. And I would like to take your feedback as well while, while, while we are building it. So I started staying out of his office, started staying out of his home. And, you know, while he was making some sales pitch, I, I used to listen to them. While I used to pitch Mercer Metal, he used to listen to my pitch. And, you know, that marriage happened. <laughs> he, he kind of uh, offered me a job. I said, you know, I'm pretty comfortable right now at Mercer, but I'll come back to you as soon as I'm looking for a job again. And that's exactly what happened. You know, the, the next time I was looking for a job, I gave him a call and I said, is it still open? And he said, this is the best timing because we're raising our pre-series A and I want someone to take care of the sales bit of it. And I joined them as their sales leader, you know, while they were raising the pre-series A. And from there, it has been a phenomenal journey as well. We're now, we're, awesome. we're now raising our PR article around our series A in, in the coming week. So we've already closed our series A as well within the span of 10 to 12 months after raising our pre-series A. 
with Sequoia, right? Uh, with Sequoia, Axel, and Stellaris. So Axel and Stellaris were already a part of our pre-series around this one. Sequoia is the third investor who's coming. Good for you, man. That's awesome. So you're very technical. You've got computer science in the background. You've done a lot of tech sales stuff. It's very impressive. How are you using your own product? This is exciting, right? So are you using the intent data yourself to do prospecting? Yeah, absolutely. I think we eat our own dog food. Uh, if you look at my browser right now, I think Slinkle would be open at at least eight different tabs. Precise. Uh, and, and that's because, you know, we, we just can't do without Slinkle or something like a Slinkle, right? I don't, I don't think a company should think about having an SBR team without having a sales and business platform. And that's because, you know, you, you need to give them the firepower and the armory that they need to be successful at their job. So, yeah, absolutely. Like we eat our own dog food. We use Lentil to identify and we reach out to sales decision makers to, you know, sell our product. So we reach out our platform to identify their phone numbers, their email addresses. Our product integrates really well with Salesforce and HubSpot. So we use our platform to find customers of Salesforce and HubSpot and the companies that have recently started during Salesforce because we refresh all the database on the, all the data on the platform every week. What that means is that around 20,000 dockers refresh around 20 terabytes of data every weekend. So it starts on Friday night, it goes on for three days and, you know, the entire database on the platform is refreshed. What, why we do that is because we want to know any company that was not using the technology till the last week, but has recently started using it. And that helps us kind of figure out the contract renewal date for that company with that technology as well. So based on the starting date, we can predict the contract renewal date. So companies like Snittle that leverages customers of their integration partners would want to know immediately when someone has purchased their integration partner. So, you know, we use our own data to find out who's using Salesforce, who started using Salesforce this week, so that we can tell them that, hey, we just made that investment in Salesforce, but right now it looks like it'll be empty. Let's just help you figure out a way to, you know, fill that up with quality data. That's awesome. So tell me about motivation. I mean, days get long. This is a tough job. Tell me about your stack. And tell me about motivation. Like, what do you use as a sequencer? You've got wingman, note taker. Like, if you could share, what's in your outbound, yeah. inbound stack? And how do you stay motivated? Those are some good, good questions. Absolutely. So, so, personally, I love to support startups. And I love the fact that startups give you the kind of support and service, after sales service and support, that is unparalleled to an enterprise PMO. While I have so much respect for enterprises as well, and I kind of take inspiration from them personally. But I prefer buying startups. And that's why, you know, you will see a wingman over Gong that we're using. We're using Outplay versus an outreach or a sales loft. We're using Outplay for our email sequencing. By the way, Lakshman is a great friend as well, the founder of Outplay. Shruti is a great friend, founder of Wingman. So it also, you know, helps us build that community of entrepreneurs that are selling to the same kind of network so that I can kind of pitch Outplay when I'm speaking to a customer, you know, who, who needs something like that. Similarly, Shruti can pitch Slintle when someone needs a sales intelligence platform. And we, we can do that all the time. On top of that, we use a Calendly for our scheduling. We're using Sales Navigator as well for, you know, uh, understanding, uh, for reaching out to our, our customers on, sales, uh, on, on LinkedIn directly. And then we use Salesforce. You know, all our CRM data is on Salesforce. Let me think if I'm missing. We use HelloSign over DocuSign, for example. Again, just to support, you know, younger companies there. So we use a HelloSign for our signature. So. Yeah, that's the kind of stack that we have. Uh, the second question I had on that was just motivation. I just added you to uh, the manuscript, oh, yeah. my book, because I have Six Cent and Bora, and I have oh, wow. one other one, but I just put you in there, which is great. Because I, my big goal for awesome. Ten Bound yeah, and Vendor so. Neutral and these consortia is to make sure that we're bringing new paradigms to the stack, that everyone's thinking about intent, right? The 2020s yeah. are about intent, no more spray and yeah. pray. We're going to go after very specific accounts. And then I want people, you know, if Mabor is the most famous one, that's great. Check out these other ones too. I'm trying to democratize these families of tech. But yeah, walk me through how you stay motivated because mindset is, so there's like the tech stacks, that's good. How do you, like, whenever I talk to you, you always have so much passion and you're calm and you're excited and you're crushing all this work. Uh, This is a lot of monotonous stuff. It's hard to be an SDR. How do you stay motivated? Yeah. Absolutely. I think as a sales leader, uh, you need to be sure that you're motivated and then your team is motivated at the same time. So, you know, we keep on sharing success. Uh, so we celebrate success in, in, a, in a grand fashion at Splinter. So every little closure, every, every 
every closure that we have, you know, we celebrate that with announcing it to the entire company. Even if that closure is as small as, say, $10,000, we would make sure that everyone in the company knows about it and, you know, is, is kind of appreciative of, of that fact. What that also helps us achieve is that even an engineer sitting at, you know, one corner of his, his bedroom right now, probably with everyone working from home, would know that, you know, this, this new feature that I, that I helped launch last week could help us get this much revenue in the last one week or the last one month. So we, we make sure that we're appreciative and we're doing that with, with the entire organization in, in place. We have a lot of fun activities that we do in the organization as well because it can be exhaustive when you're running a startup and you're scaling a startup at around 7x pace year on year. That's what we've achieved so far. So at a 7x pace, you know, you know it can get very, and, and you know, we're working out of US, working out of India, most of, the, most of us, and we're selling to US. So we're working in, you know, complete opposite shifts. We wake, we sleep in the morning, we wake up in the evening, we work, you know, all, all night long. And, you know, that's the kind of schedule that we're following. So when, when we, we're doing all of that, you need to make, make sure that, you know, that fun piece is not missing, right? So, so Deepak and I, both of us are into running. For example, we make sure that we run at least for an hour a day. Uh, Deepak is in Santa Clara, so, and I'm in Delhi. So we make sure that while both of us are running in different time zones altogether, poles apart, there's an entire Pacific Ocean between us. But while we are doing all of that, we make sure that both of us are telling each other about it and we're motivating others to run as well. And probably at the same time and share, you know, how much kilometers we did, how many, how many miles we did and what was the speed that we clogged. So we, we have a lot of fun. Like tonight after this session, uh, we have like a DJ kind of a, you know, session with all, all the salespeople where they'll be playing their playlist and we'll be all, you know, putting on our favorite head, headsets and we'll be listening to each other's music on Zoom call live. So everyone will be playing their favorite music and everyone else will be listening to it. So we make sure we have a lot of fun, you know, while we're on the job, while, you know, the work could be exhausting, but we make sure that we compensate that with fitness, with, with fun and all of that. Yeah, man, you're making me want to get over to India, but, you know, the, as the world is, it's bizarre. <laughs> Where are you based? So I'm in Delhi right now. The company is headquartered uh, in India, in Bangalore, and in US, in Santa Clara, but my home is in Delhi. So right now I'm, I'm speaking out of Delhi. Uh, that's where family is. But usually I'm either in Bangalore or in Santa Clara. Fun, man. Yeah, next time you come to Santa Clara, that's a little easier for me to get to normally. Look, it's been an awesome episode. Yeah. I learned a lot. Love the passion and just how uh, articulate you are on these topics. We're going to make sure everyone goes and checks out Slintel, S like Sam, L-I-N-T-E-L.com. Where else can they find you online and uh, so we can point them at you? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're hyperactive on LinkedIn. You know about the rambling sessions. So you can search for rambling sessions by Anupreet on YouTube as well. And these are the best places to find us actually. So LinkedIn, YouTube, and be sure to you know attend our rambling sessions as well if you're listening to this before the next rambling session. Uh, Justin is one of our speakers and we are so so proud and so excited to have Justin as one of the speakers. And that's where I will be hosting him. So it will be the other way around uh, next time you hear us talking together. So, so yeah, uh, do sign up for the next rambling session. It's happening exactly one week from now. And you would see Justin promoting that on his timeline as well as us promoting us on our LinkedIn pages as well. So be, be sure to sign up for, for that and do listen to the conversation wherein I'll be posting Justin on my next round of rambling session. Thank you, Anapreet. Thanks for being on Beyond Sales Development. And I'm really, really grateful we'll get you on again and have a great rest of your, your day and night. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting me, Justin. Thank you so much. I had so much fun.